okay so hello guys and welcome back to my channel um in today's video we will be um reacting to my first semester grades of ateneo so for context i just started my first year of my first semester here in ateneo last september and grades will be released in eight hours so right now i'll just be giving like my overall prediction of what grade I'll get based on how I did for these subjects. So for context, um, I'm a first year computer science student and the subjects I took are Seaside 20, Introduction to Computing 1, Seaside 21, Introduction to Programming 1, Math 10, Mathematics in the Modern World, Math 21, University Precalculus, Philly 12, Panitikan ng Pilipinas, CSP 11, Chinese Mandarin and Culture, what? Chinese Mandarin and Culture. Phi Ed 161 is just Physical Education. Intak 11 is Introduction to Ateneo and Culture. Okay, CSI 20 is just basically an intro to computer science. It's a computer science appreciation course, so it just gives the students like a sense of what is com computer science really is because of course most people think comp site is purely about programming when there are still lots of aspects that we haven't known that are part of computer science aside from programming and this is where seaside 20 dives in and it just teaches you or just shows you what you might be doing during your next three years here in the computer science program so this is by far my most favorite class and for me i think i've done a really great job on that class so i think i'll get around a b plus to an a and for starters um we get letter grades here so it's a b plus b c plus c d f Passing grades will depend on each subject, so we refer to the syllabus. So technically, for me, I think I'm going to get around a B plus to an A because I've gotten some grades that were pretty good and some that were just a little bit not good. So it just depends on my final exam to which I think I did okay. Just okay for me to get like maybe a B plus, but who knows? Next is CSI 21, Introduction to Programming. This is the class that I spent the most time in out of all the classes um, I took, particularly because it's very time-consuming. Programming is very, very time-consuming because not all the time the way we code, um, we, get, we can make the program work as expected. So there's always a bit of... Um, looking again to see what went wrong maybe we forgot like some indentations or stuff so this is basically the class where i had some crying because of how much time i'm spending on that but yeah that's the that those are my like hands-on activities so it's pretty time consuming not gonna lie so for hands-on activities i think i did a pretty good job since i was able to meet the requirements that the program should have what I think I didn't do well is the written exam because most of them are just um, other than the debugging part, they have like terms and definitions part to which most of the time I do badly in because I'm a very forgetful person. I sometimes tend to get mixed up on which term is which with which definition and I know, I just know like I know what this does or what does this do but for me to say the exact term, yeah, I'm just not good with the terms and definition to which I think I did badly in the midterm and for the finals, I think I also did a little bit bad but not as bad I think as the midterm so it will all depend on my final exam grade but I think I'll get around a B to a B plus for CSI 21 so let's just hope at least it can go to a B plus since I spent a lot of time for that subject and of course it's a major subject so I really wanted my major subjects to at least have 
the highest grades. Next is Math 10. It's just Mathematics in the Modern World. It's a mathematics appreciation course. So each lesson or each module that we had dives into different aspects of math. Um, we had the logic part of math. Then we had a we got to also do real life applications of math like cryptology. So it's like decoding messages, and you can also um also know the logic behind how computers um were able to tell if this um credit card number is invalid. So yeah, credit card numbers aren't just made randomly. There's a pattern, which is all thanks to math. So that's my favorite part of one of, of my math 10 lesson. But for me, um, this was not that challenging. It's more of like just average. And most of my test scores were more on careless mistakes. So sometimes I would read the question wrong or will interpret the question wrong. So for the final test, I think I remembered I did one number where I was careless, where I forgot to read the last line. So I think think I might have done a bit bad there so I'm hoping also for around a B to a B plus for math 10. Um, math 21 is university pre-calculus so before going into this course I thought it would just be all about pre-calculus like what we had in high school and technically yes it's mostly the lessons I learned in high school but here's the twist if I will compare my high school pre-calculus test to the to this math 21 test you wouldn't even you would think what the heck is this like there the math 21's test may be lessons that we have already learned but some this the professor can just like make up hard questions that are like almost <sighs> stressful so i might have known this lesson in pre-calculus during back in high school but then i the questions for the test are just really, really hard. So anyone taking Math 21, I suggest you to be able to um, know some upperclassmen who can at least give you their reviewers or their previous tests so that you can prepare. I'm not sure if that's allowed, but that, that I think is the only way for you to probably have an idea of what kind of questions your teacher can give you on the test because most of the examples we were given were mostly easy enough and straightforward while well, the test is like we were just going in circles not gonna lie i was just staring at a number for like five to ten minutes during the test i don't even know what to do it was even to the point i wrote in the solution paper i am sorry sir for this absurd solution so for math 21 it's also maybe around a b to a b plus so i'm just praying it won't go to a c or C plus because it's really really bad. At least a B to B plus will do for my pride for precalculus. Yeah. Um next is Philly twelve. So if C twenty one took so much time where I had some breakdowns, Philly twelve is where I had the most breakdowns and to the point I just gave up on that subject. Philly twelve is basically Filipino literature but throughout the history. So before the Spanish time literature, during Spanish time literature, American period, Filipino literature, until the current period. Now, I am not good in Filipino. I can talk. When it's conversations, I can understand Filipino. Or when it's like light reading novels, I can understand Filipino. But if you're asking me to read literature and find the meaning and symbolisms behind it with deep deep literature like this no no i just suck there just like english literature i can speak english i can understand english but if you're asking me to read shakespeare or i don't know any any kind of classic literature yeah i also do bad i may i mostly suck at literature whether it be english or filipino but since it's filipino it's even worse so most of my test scores were not that good to the point where I'm just asking for a passing grade. So most probably, I'm going to get like a D. Depends on the final exam. And um, the highest I think I can get, hopefully a C. At least, I don't want to, I've never gotten a D in my life. At least a C will help a bit. So yeah, I just do not want to dive back there again. Yeah. 
Now, CSP 11 is like my foreign language class. So, funny story is, they didn't even put me in that Chinese foreign language class. I got leveled up to a higher Chinese or more advanced Chinese class because my professor found out I went to a Chinese school. So, that means I had some knowledge in Chinese and she said it will be too easy for you and you'll just be bored in the basic Chinese class. So, I'm going to just level you, level you up. And the, in the class she put me in, um, it's a class, it's a Chinese class harder than what my school teaches. So I thought I would just have an easy, easy time for my foreign language class. Oh, but no. She had to make my life harder by putting me in a harder course. Not gonna lie. It's more figurative language also in Chinese. And that's really, really hard. Those four words. Yeah, then we had Chinese legends. Even like, even my grammar, I think from the essay, she would always say, minus for this grammar, minus for this grammar. So I think for this one, I'm probably getting like a C. To which I also like just gave up on that class. Yeah, I'm giving up on so much cla- so many classes. But like, if I'm not good at that class, I just like give up on that because I don't have much interest. I just wanted like to finish that class up. And I wasn't even supposed to take that class class up yet i was supposed to take the emgl 11 or purposive communication but for some reason i got i have an ap class to credit for that so they told me to pick a foreign language class and the only available one was chinese so yeah oh my gosh next is phi ed 161 so it's basically physical education it does not count towards our gpa or what we athenians call the QPI, so technically, as long as you pass that class, you're okay. And for context, they say it's very rare for someone to fill a PE class unless you don't bother submitting. So I took recreational activities, and so far, I think I'm going to get like a B or B+. plus. So I don't really care much as long as I pass that class. Next is Intact 11. So this is basically an, uh, like... Ateneo 101 course it will teach you all about Ateneo so it's just a pass or fail it also doesn't count towards our QPI so I'm I'm just gonna like pray that I pass because I don't want to fail so yeah so these those are my rants about each subject and my predictions of the grade I'll get for each subject and now let's move towards the reaction so good morning everyone it's currently 10 20 and i just woke up so now we will be um reacting to my grades so right now let me just log in to my account Whew. okay and let's see it three Two, one. Okay. Oh, my God. Is this for real? What the? Wait, let me look again. Heck? Huh? Oh my gosh! Oh my! Okay. Um. Give me five seconds. This is, is this, are, are they sure they didn't mix up my grades? This is, this, this can't be my grades. Oh my, oh my. Okay, so for CS, for CSI 20, I got an A. Wow. 
thank you, Seaside 21, miraculously, I ended up with an A. How is that possible? What happened there? Even with my low grades in my written exam, so I don't know what my prof did there, but I appreciate it. For the CSP 11, I got a B, which I'm really happy with because I originally project myself with a C based on how bad my grades were. So I don't know what my Lauscher did there, but thank you, Lauscher. Thank you, Lauscher. This is the most unexpected one. For Philly 12, I got a B+. Plus. <laughs> this is the one where I'm concerned with because I'm very sure my, grade, my first few tests were so low that I wouldn't even think it's a B anymore. I was just even hoping for a C during the first few tests. So... How it became a B plus still a mystery to me. I do not know if my teacher, my prof, curved my grade or I just did or it was just like the final one that pulled everything up. But I'm so thankful. I just hope that next day, like it, it won't suddenly change. Like they will just say, sorry, this is someone else's grade. Because that will be really heartbreaking. But I'm happy with the B+. Plus. That is so awesome. <laughs> um, For intact 11, it, it just says an asterisk. And I don't know if that means pass or fail. But I will just ask my prof later. For mat 10... For math then I got an A for some reason. So I also do not know what happened there because my first few tests were also kind of low. It was kind of on like the B side. So I was just expecting a B. So I don't know what what I did there. Or maybe it's just the final exam. But I also did, I know I did kind of bad in the final. So it's kind of weird how I got an A. But I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm just weirded out right now. For Math 21, miraculously, I got a B plus. So that's okay. I can take the B plus because originally I expected a B based on how bad I did in midterms. Yeah. But I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the B+. Plus. No one, no one, no one can make me more happier than at least getting a B plus in math. And lastly, for Phi, oh, it's Phi Ed 161. I always call it Phi Ed 11. Yeah, Phi Ed 161. I got an A. So, yeah, I'm kind of okay with it because it doesn't count. So, in total... My QPI for this semester is, wow, 3.67. 3.67. This is weird. It's 3.67. That's, that's, that's high. I was originally projecting myself around 3.3. Oh, and it's a, did they say here? It's the Dean's, oh, Dean's List Second Honor. So I think it's kind of like the honors list you'll get in high school. I think so. I got second honor. Okay, so I just realized something. I checked back on my handbook. And to my surprise, the first honor was a 3.75 for a Dean's Lister. And so I recalculated the grades again. And I just realized, if any of my subjects, if any of my subjects were, like, the, the B or B plus subjects, if they were to go at least one level higher, like, 
from the B to B, B plus or from B plus to B, A, I would have become a first honor. So, right now, I'm happy. But at the same time, there's this part of me that's saying, you were this close to getting first honor. Like, my mind is like saying, if you just put in a bit more work for a for those final exams, you would have gotten first honor. So, right now, I'm celebrating one part, and the other part, I'm just berating myself. Like, you were this close. You were this close. But you know what? I did my best. And that's what I'm saying right now. I did my best. And that's all that matters. And I should be grateful for the grades I got because predicting it was the predictions were even lower than expected. So I have to be thankful for what I have. And, you know, just do better next semester and try to aim again for the second honor or the first honor if I can without, of course, sacrificing my sanity for college so yeah so technically i woke up to such nice news that i hope this is not a dream because i want to check like the next day again if they ask if they change if i go back to do to my grade site if they accidentally change my grades or something but right now i'm in a very happy mood knowing all the efforts that I made, the tears, the pain, the sorrows, were worth it. Because this is the grade I was never expecting at all. I was expecting a much lower grade. But you know, I'm still happy. And let's hope I can keep it up for the second semester. So, I hope you like this video. And please like and Subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!